I have just started the event. Mm -hmm. I, we are still waiting for a couple of people to pop in, but yeah. yeah. Let's take a look here. Keith, you're a finance officer. You must be from one of the Dakotas because that's where I always see the finance officers. From I know there's a way to see where they're actually from, but I can't find it. Hey, Lene, how are you? <laughs> okay, we are still waiting on a few people, but I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to record this, so y'all can take a peek at it later if you need to. Otherwise, you're also welcome to email me with any questions that you may have. We'll um, put my email address at the end. And of course, you can always give me a call. Um, it's neat that Lene is here. For me, I, I think it's very cool. Lene was um, one of the first customers I ever spoke with. Um, she came to us um, interested in clerk minutes. I picked up the phone, had a phone call with her, several phone calls with her back and forth, um, talking about clerk minutes. She is not actually um, Team Town Web yet, but it's totally okay. We still welcome her because she loves clerk minutes. She uses it all the time. And um, she taught me how to really relate to the customers and um, become a part of a, of, of a team. Um, learning how to do things that I was not comfortable with. And um, from there, she's grown. She has started taking on some other, looking into some other um, digital transformation tools. And it's it's neat for me. She, she will always be the one I think of when I started as a client relations manager. So anyway, let's go ahead. Hey, Megan, I'm glad you're here. If you need to, Megan, um, I might have you turn on a microphone at some point because it wouldn't hurt to have your backup because you know all the stuff. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I am doing today's webinar a little different than what I normally do um, because I did want to keep it casual. I don't want this to be intimidating for anyone. So let's go ahead and get started. And I apologize. My office mates are trying to get on my lap. So if you'll excuse me. Sally, go lay down, sir. <laughs> okay. Mastering the Digital Transformation, um, a guide to digitizing records and embracing a paperless future. So we are going to get started. This is sweet Miss Betty. Now, Miss Betty, she is very firm very set in her ways, but she is all that in the end sum. She loves her little sticky notes. She loves her tablets. Um, the cell phone for her is non-existent. She is still doing things the old school way and it's okay. She uses her checking account at home and in the municipality. Um, she has a, a landline. She does has started to use her computer but guess what? It's with two fingers and that's okay too. She essentially knows how to turn it on, type her minutes and do some emails. That's all she has a use for it. But she is a legend in her town. She has easily made it through at least six administrations and she's still a very solid member of team town team. I'm sorry, city Willow Bay. And then we have the new deputy clerk, Bella. Bella is about as sweet as peach pie. She is just out of business school. She is there and ready to work. She's, uh, as being a recent grad, she's of course all about tech and AI. She is on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. She even follows a clerkfluencer. I didn't know there were such a thing as clerkfluencers, but there I absolutely are and they are everywhere. So um, she's not really one to 
pick a fight. She doesn't want to argue with sweet Miss Betty because Miss Betty is training her to the best of her ability. But she knows that out there, there is a way to do things better. And Megan, I'll tell you, checks, checkbooks are gross. <laughs> That's right. I always think of Megan whenever I do something related to this because Megan does not use a checkbook. She very rarely uses a credit card. Everything is on her supercomputer, her cell phone. She does everything by cell phone. And honestly, I think of Megan on a daily basis because of that. Because honestly, I cannot figure out how in the world I get my credit cards onto my cell phone. And I should probably do that next time Megan and I get together. But um, Bella's focus is to make life easier for everyone in the municipality. And I am me. I am Michelle Dorneaton. I am the client relations manager here with Town Web. Um, I absolutely like my other Southern girls. I love my pearls. The only thing bigger than my pearls is my hair most days. Um, I am still learning to be tech savvy. <laughs> I appreciate that, Megan. Thank you. Um, so I am still learning to be tech savvy. When I came on to Town Web, if we're being honest, I had no clue what I was doing. I applied, I jumped in fate first and thought, I can do this. I know I can and quickly realized that I was in way over my head. Al became somebody that I aspired to be, that I looked up to. I couldn't wait to meet Al. I wanted to know why Al had all this knowledge and was just such an active part of Town Web. And then I realized that Al was AI. But for me to look at it on screen, coming from where I came from, I had no idea. I thought, Al was a person, and it is, in fact, AI, um, automated intelligence, and it's something that is everywhere now. I grew up in the Midwest, but I've gradually converted, moved further and further south. I didn't know computers like people today know computers. So as I've grown with them, I've grown with the company, and now we're on a whole new level, but I'm here today to talk about the digitiz digitization, how we can do it. And I'm going to talk to you about it on our level so that everybody can understand. So we're going to start with the solution. What we need to do is start by making a plan. What do we need? How will we use it? How do we get everyone on board? Unfortunately, you are never, ever, ever going to get everyone on board right away. It's going to take time. But if you have that what, how, and when, it can move forward. And of course, the question is always going to be why? Why do we need to do this? Well, I love the Lorax. Dr. Seuss is, is one of our favorites. Um, and he really delves into the whole thing about save the trees. Of course, it's an environmental subject, but it's also about safety of your records. And it's a space saver. All those big filing cabinets y'all got behind me, um, the the stacks and stacks of book, books with all your records from years back, that can all be digitized. So why is digitizing important? It's, it's to make it easily searchable. During the times of COVID, there were so many of us that worked from home. We went from being all in an office every single day, seeing everyone, um, actively participating in everyone. Excuse me, I have a puppy that has decided she wants something else. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all could hear that rattling, but she grabbed my treat bag out of my desk. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Casey, um, my little Jack Russell was opening her, her very favorite bag of chips. I apologize. <laughs> I know it had to be distracting for y'all because it was distracting for me. Um, so, y'all, <laughs> I told you we were going to be informal today. <laughs> so the importance of digitized records really comes down to having those records 
be accessible for everyone. So when Bella wants to work from home, and she will, we know that Bella, she just got out of college. She just got married. She's ready to have them babies. And when she does, she's going to want to work from home. But if she works from home, how will she ever get a hold of those records? By digitizing them. She starts now, she makes that plan, she gets things moving. And by the time she's ready to go on maternity leave two years from now, she has everything rolling as smooth as butter. So she can not only make it accessible for people that are working from home, but so many municipalities these days have different buildings. I know for us, we have one where we have the fire and police. We have another where we have the community board members. And then we have yet another that is our actual town hall. So by making everything accessible online, it doesn't matter what building they're in, everybody can get to the records that they need. And yet there are still more reasons. It's, it's a money saving factor. I know that's hard to believe, especially when you see the process of them. And believe me, when I saw the process, I was like, y'all, are you sure this is right? Can we make this a little bit lower? But you really can't because it comes down to, we have the developers that, that make everything up. We have the team that does all the upkeep. And then we have the team that builds everything. So when you put those all together, it, it takes a massive amount of time and energy just to get that product up and rolling. But I assure you, it is absolutely worth it. And you will save money in the end because you're going to save money on staff. You're going to save money on the standard things like pens, pencils, papers. You're going to save um, just in general that that time and energy is going to be a huge input for your municipality. And you want to be going in the right direction. You want to be moving forward. Everything is changing. The future is coming. It's, it's here now. So you want to stay ahead of that curve and make sure that your municipality puts the best foot forward by representing who you really are on your website. You can do everything from your meeting minutes on there to your forms, um, anything you can possibly imagine, anything you have in that filing cabinet or on that whiteboard, you can put onto your municipal website and you absolutely should. So some of the tools for effective um, record digitiz digitization, and I definitely have notes on this because like I said, I am not a techie person. I'm, I'm just not. So I'm totally okay with the fact that I do have my note cards. Um, so like the laser fiche, the laser fiche is document and records management. They create public files. Many of us from back in the day, we can think of it as microfiche. Um, I don't know. I'm curious if Megan knows what microfiche is. Because for me, microfiche came in when I was probably late high school, maybe college. Um, and microfiche was the way that the library filed newspaper and magazine articles um, kind of online. But it wasn't. You had to go to the library and you would say, hey, I'm looking for, for an article from 1978. And they'd say, oh, it's probably on microfiche. Go check, the, go check the computer over there. So you go over, you pull up your computer, and sure enough, microfiche, and you'd get this little slide that went in, and there you would read the article. So laser fiche is kind of the same thing, except it's actually online, and it's something that you can purchase and load. I didn't know what it was until I started working for HeyGov and Dustin mentioned it. Yay! <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Dustin um, is our owner uh, He and president. He's, he's the big guy upstairs that may or may not be watching this and grading it. <laughs> but if so, Dustin give, Dustin, give me points because I'm sharing all that in-depth knowledge from the 80s with everyone today. Um, then we move on to Municode. Municode, they are, they are code finders. They build search engines for local ordinances. So if you have your ordinances, you want to put those online, they are one of those companies that build that and make it a searchable file for your website. Um, general code, again, they create links um, for zoning ordinances, building codes, um, that kind of thing. So if you want to do something online, theirs is a, um, they, again, they build it, 
you purchase or or I, I guess you would sign a contract with them. Um, they then put the links onto your web page so that any of your constituents, if they're looking for information, they can click on the link and then go through those forms um, to find the ordinance or the, the code that they need. Uh, then we, of course, have HeyGov. HeyGov does many, many things. Um, they have automated reservations, email management, fillable forms, um, online bill pay, uh, ACH credit card payments. HeyGov has a whole toolbox of things, and we will get into those a little bit deeper um, here in a few minutes. Um, again, we go to more, uh, yet a few more. Um, so Google Drive. Google Drive is one that we actually, here at Town Web, we use Google Drive a lot. It's highly recommended by us. We use it as our email service, um, Google uh, Workspace, we use as our email service. So Google Drive, um, you can send emails, you can store and share and collaborate files. Um, Google Sheets are amazing. Megan's got something to add to this. Oh, I don't have anything to add. I was just joining just in case I did. <laughs> okay, because she knows she's going to have to, y'all. And she knows that because she knows that I am still, I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard and I'm learning this stuff, oh, but I'm still good. learning. Yay. No, I just thought, you mentioned me joining later on. So I thought I just, I was downstairs. So I just now came upstairs and got everything set up. <laughs> I'm glad I'm everyone meet Megan. She's amazing. Yes. And I have my cat with me. We all have oh. animals. <laughs> Uh, Keith, you are right. Civic Plus has acquired Municode, um, which then leads you with you kind of have to have Civic Plus to use Municode. Isn't that right, Megan? Um, I think you can get it as a standalone service, um, but you're still like in the Civic Plus ecosystem, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So we will get into that a little bit later, Keith, but you are right. Um, Municode has been acquired um, by another web design company, but we're not going to hold that against them at this point. So um, <laughs> Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is an easy way to back up files into the cloud. Um, for the, the, those of you who aren't familiar with the cloud, we will touch on that because, because we need to. Um, OneDrive is essentially Microsoft's version of the cloud storage system. It does have a disadvantage though with um, with Microsoft, with the OneDrive, Microsoft um, does not allow you to share with very many people. It's very limited on the circle you can share with. So if you were, um, if you were using OneDrive to save a file and then someone reached out to you, one of your constituents and said, hey, I'm looking for the information on this you would not necessarily be able to just send them that file. They can't um, pull it up on your website. It's it's exclusively for you to save into your documents on your computer. Um, and then we have Clerk Minutes. Clerk Minutes uh, not only stores your meeting minutes, it takes your agenda and the meeting minutes that you have recorded, it marries it together and it produces your meeting minutes in writing so that you can upload them to your website and make it shareable to your constituents and your community. And of course, many of us know what this little thing is here. Um, so this is Miss Betty's idea of storage. It was my idea of storage for a long time. It's the floppy disk and floppy disks are absolutely wonderful things. Miss Betty, she has a whole stack of them. Um, she uses them for coasters, and they're awesome. Uh, they're no longer used in, in computers. Um, many of you can check your laptop all over. I did, um, and I do not have a spot for a floppy disk anymore. So the ones that you still have, um, by all means, if you cover them with some cork, they're perfect for coasters. <laughs> Um, <laughs> USB ports are another one of those things that they're kind of going the way of the past only because you can still use them. You can still upload everything onto those little USB ports. And actually, I apologize because I don't even have one, but it's those little, those little the thumb drives. 
Yes, thumb draws. Is it not a USB port anymore? It's I mean, the port. USB port is what you plug it into. I think it's oh, there's well, a lot of names for it. See, <laughs> there we, okay, see, y'all are learning from Megan. Um, so yes, the thumb drives, and I think they must call them that because of the size of your thumb. Yeah, I thought I had one over here, but I don't see it. Yeah, there. So you'll you'll find them in all the old movies because it never fails. That's what the information is stored on and stolen from. It's that USB port or that US, the thumb drive. So um, we still recommend use of those, but only when you're trying to transfer data, say from um, your hidden records to online. Um, and again, that's one of those things, we'll touch base on that in a little bit. Um, but overall, you can um, scan your paperwork load it onto your computer, then load that down into the thumb drive. I've got it now. And um, for that to anyone who may need it. So um, let's kind of move on. Ah, Nella, is, uh, she's a little bit older than Megan. She's got two in her drawer. <laughs> I do have some. I just, I don't know where they're at right now. I don't use them that much. And if you don't know where computer. they are, there's a reason for that. <laughs> well, I used them when I was in college. I don't really need them anymore. Yep. I agree. <laughs> it's funny how quickly things change, which is, is, again, brings us back to staying ahead of the curve. So when we go to digitizing, there's really three options. You can go traditional, half and half, or all in, dive in the e deep end of the pole all at once. It's all in what you are comfortable with. Um, I have seen it done several different ways. Um, when I think back to um, Alby, Alby is this sweet little man out in Kiwani. Um, some of you actually probably know him. It, it would not surprise me. Alby is well known um, out in the community up in Wisconsin. He oversees the campground slash um, uh, fishing pier up there. And so where they put in the boat docks, Alby was one of those guys that said, you know, th this is too much. I can't do this. What do I do? Because I'm old, I'm tired. And, I'm, and every time somebody comes to put their boat in at the launch, he has to jump on his golf cart, go over there, meet with them, write down all their information, take their payment, give them an envelope, and then go back to where he came from. And it's every single time. It was too much. He wanted something different. So he decided um, to have the staff there reach out and make a change. So when it comes to like the payment options, um, just to give you an example, one department, one function, boat launch permits, marina, parks, you can do one little step at a time if you choose to, or you can just do one department. Maybe one department says, hey, I need these things, and you want to just start going that way. You can do the half and half. So instead of um, having just forms that you hand out or forms they have printed off, you could do online fillable forms. Um, this is a PDF form that you essentially load onto the computer system or send to us and we will load it for you. Um, and you load it onto your computer system. You can then go on and actually fill out that form online and print it off, then bring it back into the office. Um, that is certainly one of the options and and it's, it's, it's helpful. It makes a big difference. It, it keeps you from having to um, hand out the, those forms in the office. It keeps them from having to fill those forms out by hand. And I'm sure many of you can confirm that everyone's handwriting is maybe not as neat as it could be. So um, it'll stop you from having to make multiple calls trying to identify what this number is or what this letter is. Um, it just makes it much more accurate for your municipality. One of those other options when you do the half and half is um, that you run um, concurrent processes. So um, Miss Betty isn't quite comfortable with those PDF forms online because she's like, you know, what if it what if it won't print? What if they don't have it? What if this? So she can um, 
she can go ahead and she has a copy in her office that she can hand out or they can do it online. And that's totally okay. If she feels like she needs to fill that information in online and everybody's not ready to go full blown right away, that is totally okay. We're okay with it and you should be too. Um, the all in online right straight ahead, that is absolutely a big leap, but I guarantee you it's absolutely worth it. All the departments, they figure out what they want. They start loading those up, whether it be forms, online payments, reservations, all stuff that we will get into. Um, it's, it's a big step to do it, but I think for a lot of municipalities, especially those that are just getting a website, if they go all in right away, it oftentimes makes it easier because you're not having to worry about all those other forms that you've got to find. You're not having to worry about taking cash and checks. You can just go full blown right away. Um, as far as meeting minutes, let's um, just kind of review where those came from and where they've where they've been. Um, we of course have the the era of of was it Bob Hatchet? <laughs> Remember? Oh, Ratchet. Remember back in um, back in um, y'all. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Everybody's like, wait, what? Um, it's yeah, <laughs> Megan. Don't laugh like that. Uh, you know, Scrooge. Oh, um, it's Bob Ratchet, right? I don't know. Where, where he went <laughs> and he wrote everything down in the books. Everything was a ledger, and it had to be filled out in the books. Obviously, that Cratchit. you know, Cratchit, Cratchit, Bob Cratchit. So he filled out everything out in the books. Probably the early '80s, we went to spiral bound composite books, and then of course in the '90s, um, and and probably early 2000s as well. It was the recorder with the notepads. Um, now we are in 2020s and it's clerk minutes. So when we talk about all those different things, obviously um, those books are just way too bulky. They're out of control. The spiral bounds were flat out messy. And the recorder with a notepad, while it's a great option, it's just time consuming. AI or Al, um, he can be your big helper with, um, with that recording. If you're doing the recording anyway, it's much easier to just match that up with your agenda and have clerk minutes produce your meeting minutes for you. And I'm sure that Lene will attest to that. She went from doing many, many meetings in a month and um, having to type out everything to recording it all and having clerk minutes do it for her. Oh, Lene is giving us some insight. <laughs> she loves clerk, clerk minutes. Lene, if you don't mind us asking, do you have an idea of like how much time you save a month using um, AI to transcribe for you? See, there's so many minutes she can't even tell. Right <laughs> She's talking now. <laughs> There's a lot of minutes to count for. We can't yep. find your neck. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> totally okay. All right. So let's see. What else? Okay. Efficiency in minutes. So really, in my mind, six hours a week, y'all. Lene wow. says six hours a week. So um, that's essentially, when you put that into a month, that is an entire person. So if you, if you have somebody that comes in part-time just to give you a hand an hour or two a day after school, um, or maybe they do a training session with you guys, when you put all that into, because many part-timers are only working 20 or 40 hours, um, that is an entire person. And when we think about it, you know, that's like, look at Miss Betty. I mean, she's only got two hands. But you're adding a whole other person to the office. So um, the efficiency in meeting minutes, really, it's all about starting. It's jumping in and just doing it. There's no right or wrong way. It is not by any means a one size fits all. 
yes. So Lene says that she uses it on all the meetings and the people that are not experienced in, in taking minutes. It's a lifesaver. Yay. That makes us so happy. Um, clerk minutes, obviously, as you can tell, it's um, one of my favorite things. And um, I would say probably clerk minutes and 311 are the two that I am just over the moon about because I think it's just such a cool thing. Um, and it makes clerk life easier. Um, so if you're thinking about bringing in that office helper, it might be even simpler for you to just simply go on with clerk minutes. Um, and you don't have to have an exact perfect agenda. You don't have to um, lay things out a certain way. You do everything your way. AI reads what you have given us and then um, transcribes it into a readable fashion. You may have to go in and update some things, but as the um, as AI gets to know you, it begins to understand who the people are and what you're saying. Look at that, the building inspector. Now, Lene has gone from one department, she herself using it, to now another department. The building inspector is using the um, clerk minutes for planning commission meetings. That's awesome, awesome example. Thank you, Lene. I actually talked to um, another municipality, I'm blanking on who it was, I was doing calls, you know, just getting general feedback mm -hmm. on clerk minutes. And the clerk said that it helped her out a lot because when she's out, normally she's the only one that would be able to do the minutes because she's the only one who knew how. And her treasurer yep. is able to step in whenever she needs to miss a meeting. It's not a big deal anymore. She can record the meetings, process them with clerk minutes. So if she's sick out for whatever reason, it's not a big deal anymore. The treasurer can log in. She's not even very tech literate. Like she's, mm -hmm not very tech savvy and she finds it very easy to be able to use clerk minutes so yes i absolutely agree with that um that is actually something that we are going to bring up vacations not bit. allowed because <laughs> it's it's so oh, it's now allowed i thought you meant night <laughs> yes yeah. vacation is now allowed that's right um so the uh, tip a few tips and ideas of course um the biggest thing that we are always going to promote is that the searchable database, um, even if it starts out tiny, whether you realize it or not, even just by putting your meeting minutes into your website, um, even that is searchable. I did not know until I came to Town Web, but I can have meeting minutes up there for um, a municipality. If I'm looking for something specific, if I hit Control F, it's a find function. Who knew? To me, that was mind blowing. Um, I never knew what a find function was, but that control F allows me to type in whatever I'm looking for. So even if you don't have one of those companies that has the search function built in, you can still search your meeting minutes or really anything that you have on your computer screen with that control F function. So it'll get you to that direct part. Now, Clerk Minutes does have that search function. So when you have your meeting minutes loaded, you can go in there and as you're listening to or reading that, um, that transcript of the meeting, whatever happened, you can type in there exactly what you're looking for. It'll tell you what minute that is at. So you can forward the video or the written out meeting minutes to find exactly what you're looking for. There's, of course, always going to be people that want to do it their own way that say, no, this is just too much. I can't do it. That's OK. Um, they don't they don't have to do it right away. Bella can go ahead and Bella may only be the deputy clerk. But if she feels like this is something that's going to make a difference for her community, I guarantee you take the time, do your research, go to the board. They're going to back you. They're going to understand that you're doing this for the betterment of your community. Um, so just figure out what you want, figure out how you're going to do it, get organized and stick with it. If you need help, we are here. There is. Um, and and I can I, I, I assure you, even if it's with another company. Um, your your account, your your website is with Town Web. We're going to support you in any way that we can to help you make sure 
that you are getting what you need out of your website. Um, some other thoughts, there is, it, it's going to take time. There's going to be a transition period and you should absolutely plan for that. You should plan for where you're going to start and how you're going to get there. There's a lot of different vendors out there. Um, we recommend absolutely do your research, check out all those vendors. One of the things that I will say for me personally, um, I find that whoever provides me with the most services um, is probably the one that I'm going to go with. Um, I I go back to it where, um, back where I used to live, way back when, I went to this very different um, salon where you would go in and one person washed your hair, one person cut your hair, one person colored your hair, one person styled your hair. It was absolute insanity to me. Not only did I have to pay each one of them, I had to tip each one of them. And I was like, Gah! so when I'd call, I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm having an issue with this. And they're like, well, would do you need to talk to Marley or do you need to talk to Delilah or Athena? I, I don't know. I just I know there's something wrong with my hair and I don't like it and I need it fixed. But again, um, by having all those servers, all those people out there wanting to wait on me, I, I didn't know who to call to fix the problem. So one of the ideas here is that if you stick with a vendor who can supply you with multiple different items, that is always a big plus in my book. Um, I, and one of the other great things is the line items, as we've listed here um, rather than putting in, you know, $100 a month for office supplies, roll that budget up and use it for technological advancement. Um, sometimes it is worth it to go without a few pins. You can steal those from the doctor's office. I didn't say that, <laughs> but it's true. Um, so, you, I mean, you can get pins anywhere. You cannot get your uh, online tools just anywhere. You need to go to somebody that's equipped and able to provide you with municipal um, tools that you can actually use. Um, again, as we've talked about, it's all about creating that roadmap, knowing where you're at, where you're starting with Miss Betty, and where you're going to end in Bella's big, big world of AI. Um, it's it's all about prioritizing what's most important. So. Um, for a lot of our clerks, I feel like especially right now, uh, clerk minutes is probably their top priority because they realize, just like Lene does, how many hours they save. And as as it was mentioned um, by Megan, when Miss Betty is off, she does not want to hand over the reins to anybody. But um, I mean, that original clerk you had, she's getting up there. She's a little bit older. She's tired and inevitably she's going to get sick. And if there's a night where she is just, she comes home from work, she's bush, she wants to take a little snooze, she can because Bella can go and record that meeting. Bella can put the minutes in. And even though she still has to send it to Miss Betty for approval, at least she can do it on her own. Going through this, doing it all one step at a time, knowing what's most important for your particular municipality is always the key. Um, one of the other little sad things, and this is actually one of Nolette's hints, um, is emailing yourself documents. She taught me about this actually months ago when I when I started. Um, if I have something that I don't know how to save and I know that I want it, if nothing else, I can take a screenshot and email it to myself or, or copy that link and email the link to myself so that I can store it in my emails. And then I always have it until I figure out how I'm actually supposed to save it in my bookmarks or on my computer screen. Um, and that was, for me, it was it was a huge bonus in my learning curve, um, knowing that I didn't have to remember how to open everything right away or how to do everything right away, that if I just emailed it to myself, it was saved. That was a big one for me. Um, so as we talked about, again, the the vendors that offer multiple services, that's also your big bonus. So I'm kind of curious 
um, of course, we have Miss Betty and we have and we have Bella, and they're both sweet as peach pie. But which one are you? Are you a Betty or a Bella? So if you're a Betty, raise your hand. It's okay because I'm the only one that can see you. So go ahead. Don't be shy. <laughs> That's a good number of us. And Bella, who's a Bella? Ah, there we go. There's a couple of you, not quite as many. And it's okay. That's totally okay. Because there's going to be Bellas that are going to come into your office. And they're going to want to take over. Not to slide you out of your position, but to help. And it's going to, uh, it, it's going to be a transition, but give them a chance. The, the hair and the pearls is not all that they have in common. I promise you, the key to making your municipality digitized is cooperation. And they both want what's best for, the, for their municipality. Willow Bay is going to be amazing because of the teamwork they're going to put into it. So let's make it all make sense. For those of y'all, all the baddies out there like me, um, let's talk about what each one of these are. And I found it, the most difficult thing for me was that somebody would talk about something or um, and, and say, you know, we're going to add this to the website or we want to do this or we want to do that. And then I would go into our list of, of what we had available. And I was like, I don't know what that is. I, I have no idea what that is. So let's make sense of it. Clerk Minutes is your personal transcriptionist. It, it takes your meeting minutes and turns them into actual printed out meeting minutes. Hey, 311, it's, a, it's the citizen communication app. So when a citizen has an issue from home, they see something, they can go onto their phone, they can go onto their laptop, they can go onto their iPad, they can send a message, let you know what's happening in the community, that there's that there's a non-emergent emergency. They can send you the information so that you can send out the crew to make things better. Hey, license, online fillable forms. What? That's what I said. I'm like, why is that a license? It's technically not a license necessarily. Um, online fillable forms, it's essentially, it's, it's almost like putting a trademark on your form. So this is the form that your community uses Sometimes it is a dog license. Sometimes it's as simple as a building permit, but it's a license because it's something that you use for your community. Hey, Gov pay. So it's a payment porthole for online bill pay, not always connected to a form, but that is the intent. So when somebody goes on, whether it's to fill out a form or maybe they're paying their water bill or their sewage bill, um, maybe they're registering their kids for softball. It's an easy way to make that payment online. Hey, reserve. It's kind of what it sounds like um, because it is facility rentals, but sometimes it doesn't even necessarily have to have a cost to it. Uh, we have a community park um, and if our, our community park, we call in and we say, hey, y'all, um, I'm going to bring the church group out on Saturday for a picnic. I would like the pavilion. So they turn around, they write it on their little whiteboard up there, and they say Michelle has Michelle has Eastern Park for Saturday. That's all well and good until somebody accidentally bumps up against the board and erases it. And then I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know it happens. I know you do. <laughs> so um, the upside, while we say it's a facility rental, it's essentially just a way for you to, or for the for the resident to go online and look at your calendar. It's all there in black and white, unless they make their screen pink or green or orange like I do. Um, but it's a way for them to look on the screen and see that the pavilion is open on this day and yes, they want it. It may or may not have a cost. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's just a way for everyone to know what in your community is available when a resident may need it. And some people use things that aren't exactly like for reservations per se. Mm -hmm. um, there's a municipality that uses it for finger 
print appointments, like their police department for people who need uh, fingerprints done, they actually scheduled them through Hay Reserve. So you can get a little creative with it. Um, there's many different things you can do with the system. That's awesome. Tell me more, Megan, because I will admit when I was preparing for this webinar, I was like, huh, why, why do we do fingerprinting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, I guess their police department, they didn't have like a way to schedule them online. People had to call or um, come in office to schedule it. So, you know, there's different things you need fingerprints on certain jobs or, you know, whatever to get certain certifications. And so they just have them reserve a time um, through Hay Reserve. They have like a little section for it on there. Instead of it being like a facility, it just says fingerprint appointments and then they can just go on there. They fill out the form the same way and everything. So there's so a lot of. Yeah, um, that, that is another totally locality I talk to that does reservations for like, I guess only so many people can use their dog park at a time. Mm -hmm. And so um, they kind of stagger it by having people reserve online, like through Hay Reserve for their dog park. So there's some other ways to use it outside of just like facility reservations. That is awesome. And I would, I, I actually, I'm going to recommend it to our courthouse because yeah. our courthouse does appointments for um, passport reservations. So I'm, I'm in the midst of getting a passport for my daughter. And they said, you have to come in. You have to fill out this form. You have to come in for an interview. You have to do that. And I was like, wait, what? I'm like, she's nine. She's not going to bomb me. <laughs> Don't say that word. <laughs> so essentially, I have to fill out a form ahead of time and take that form in to the courthouse and meet with somebody to interview myself and my daughter. And I was like, okay, well, what do you have available? And she's like, um, the third Monday of this month at 8 a.m. or the second week of this month. And I was like, okay, just give me the next available and I'll make it work. <laughs> How awesome would it be to just be able to pop up their calendar on my screen and say, that's perfect. I'll take it, please. Yes. Um, so yeah, like Megan said, when you have an active municipality, no matter your size, you could be a 500 person municipality, you could be a 5,000 there is still scheduling conflicts. So to be able to pull those quote unquote reservations up online makes a huge difference. The Marina module, um, this is actually something relatively new to us. It was specifically built for a municipality, um, but it also relates to campgrounds. We have a couple of municipalities that we have done campground reservations for, um, and now the Marina module so I'm curious to see if it does end up getting renamed somehow, but it's currently a marina module. So it allows people to book multiple days um, for a specific dock or site. They can look at the size of their boat compared to the dock. They can look and see if they want a lift versus a just walkout dock. Um, for with your, if it's an RV, they can look and see if they want a plug-in outlet or if they're going to go totally tenting it out. Um, <laughs> but it is something, and and we can adjust it for your community and what your community is actually needing. Yeah, I can add on a little bit to this since it is Please. new. Um, yes. So it it is it is like we just developed it within the past few months. It's basically an extension of Hay Reserve that allows you to do multi-day booking multi-day bookings so we call it the marina module because it was built for a specific marina um we built it for a specific municipality but we found other uses for it mm -hmm. so um we've talked to some municipalities that plan on using it for their campground for those multi-day rentals because right how it was in hay reserve you could only rent for one day for a certain time slot or whatever time you put in instead of um you know from this day to this day where with campgrounds usually I mean, not usually, but a lot of times you're going to be staying for multiple days, especially if you, got, you have an RV or something. Um, and then with the marina, some people, you know, they need to dock their boats for extended periods of time. So it just gives them the ability to do that. And it has the form still built in. And as Michelle said, you, you can kind of um, have it filtered out by specifics on that spot, whether it's the length of um, 
what boat you can have at that dock or it's what type of campsite it is. Um, if it's annual or transient, like for the docks, um, there's a lot of different options we can kind of build in. Um, but it's basically an extension of Hay Reserve that just allows multi-day bookings. And I absolutely agree with that. Um, for me, again, I you have to realize, I freely admit, I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge as far as terms and AI and how everything worked. So when I saw Hay Reserve, I was like, okay, obviously I'm reserving something. Um, but for me, I'm used to reserving reservations for dinner. Um, so I didn't get the whole aspect of it. And actually it was, um, I want to say it was the very first conference I went to in Wisconsin where I had um, a client come up to me and we started discussing the issues with her community and what she was really needing. And it turned into a whole thing with the campground. And I said, you know what? We can help you. We, we, we can, that one person that you have there living in a cabin on your campground, taking up your campground space to check people in as they come in, we can fix all that. And we turned her over to Megan and sure enough, Megan like blossomed with it and turned it into a reservation system for this particular campground. Um, and I think they've saved, there's one of your money savers right there. Like, <laughs> I think she was getting like a $10,000 salary a year, which doesn't sound like much, but she also had a house to live in and she had storage. And before we knew it, she had her kids camping there and they had a, had a summer site and somebody else had a summer site. So yeah, it was, there, there was a lot of drama involved. <laughs> there was. So it was um, thousands, and thousands and thousands of dollars that they were actually paying this woman. I think she made more than I do. Um, in the end, and um, essentially, we we made it so they could just simply do um, reservations. People can check in when they get there, um, whether they do a QR code or they do an online reservation. It's payable online. They can choose their site, and there they go. They don't need somebody sitting there at the campground or at the marina or at the park every single day waiting for people to check in, which also goes with those QR codes. Um, super easy, Kiwani, that was an Alvi thing. The, the QR codes, um, for those of you that don't know, it's one of those simple things that you just scan with your phone. You Okay, you, you may not be able to scan it with your phone. If you have a flip phone, I don't know that it'll work. And I apologize because Miss Betty has that flip phone. <laughs> um, my daddy actually still had a flip phone. Um, so he would not have been able to do it. But like with my daddy, one of us was always around. So we had a phone, our supercomputer, that we could, in fact, scan that QR code um, for him. It's froze. There we oh, go. No. <laughs> Um, so quick pay, quick pay is essentially, it's still those HAGOV pay payment portals. I actually included it today because I knew what HAGOV pay was. I knew that, um, it was a way to pay online. Um, interestingly enough, I, even as a member of the digital digital team, I did not realize that payments with forms was different from online payments. So when I would talk to a potential customer that wanted to upgrade their website, we would talk about, oh, online forms, online payments, da, da, and I didn't realize that those are two very separate things. So a quick pay is a payment system that is essentially integrated it says here into your licenses, but again, remember your licenses are your online forms. So if you are making, um, if you have that softball sign up for your kids rock team, they go online, they fill out those forms and it says, awesome, you're all set. As I just did, um, it's $185 for this season. How would you like to pay that? Click on it. I'm going to pay with my credit card 
and right then and there, you can put your credit card payment into there. And then of course, if you're like my daughter, um, who plays on multiple teams, you then get the payment for the next team and the next team and the travel league and to buy the uniform for each one of those teams. But it is a bonus for all of you, not only the clerks, but the municipality, because it's all right there. And it truly is quick. Once you have that credit card loaded into there, they'll say, would you like to use this credit card? Yes, my last four digits are 7496. Don't write that down. But it's there. So um, they will recognize you as you sign up each year and for each child. And of course, emails and archiving. This is something I absolutely do not want to leave out because Miss Betty, um, like so many of us, she has Betty Boo at 312 at gmail.com. And then she has Mima and Friends 3615 at, uh, is it? Hmm. I, I don't even know. I, 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 because I forget now how many there were, but Roadrunner, I guess there's still probably Roadrunner out there. Some of y'all have a lot of, there's the Yahoo addresses. Um, thank you, Nellet. Um, there's the Yahoo addresses. There's so many different email systems. Some of you are using NetBound. Some of you are using um, Cape Town. Some of you are using Island Reserve. Um, everybody <laughs> has those private um, I just, when I say private, uh, emails that come to your home, that is not okay. <laughs> it's just not, um, you need to have that email that stays with your post. If you are the clerk, if you are the assistant clerk, if you are the finance officer, if you are the mayor, your email address should never, ever, ever include any personal information about you. And I cannot emphasize that enough because God forbid something terrible happens and somebody gets frustrated with your community and they come back and sue, you are going to be held responsible because all that information you can't produce it and you can't produce it because it's in your private email. So they're going to go through every stitch of your life, every drama your daughter, sons, brothers, cousins, mother ever told you on email. They're going to go through every inch of that. Whereas if you simply have for your community, for your municipality, each position should have an email address that recognizes who it is. Clerk at City of Willow Bay, Deputy Clerk at City of Willow Bay. And of course, you can use abbreviations for that. Mayor at, at City of, of Willow Bay. Abbreviations are perfectly fine, but every single one of them should go with a .com or preferably a .gov. If your community does not have a .gov, we're happy to help you with that. We can assist you. Um, and, and, and we're, we're happy to do it because the .gov email addresses are much more secure. And again, for us, we use, um, the, we use the Google because it is, it, it is safer and you want to have all those emails archived. So if something does come up three years from now, they can easily pull up those emails. They know what has transpired and they know how to help you fix it. We're going to give you a few of the of the of the use cases here. Um, City of Watoma, of course, they have many many different options: the forms and licensing, um, reservations, payments, events, meetings, open records. So, um, if you had the, um, the with, obviously with the Freedom of Inf Information Act, um, everything has to be out there and usable. Watoma is one that uses it for exactly that. Um, any police requests they have, um, police records, it can all be pulled up. I think actually, I, I think Watoma might be one of them that uses fingerprints. Do they use pink fingerprint reservations? Uh, uh, let me check. I, 
I've worked with so many municipalities at this point. It's hard for me to keep it. But I, I know that they, um, I know that <laughs> one of the things that they integrate is their Freedom of Information Act so that you can access everything right there. Um, Sheboygan. So Sheboygan is actually the one that does marina bookings. Um, I'll be completely honest. They do not have a town web website. I think they will at some point, just like I think um, Rib Mountain will, maybe, Lene. <laughs> um, do um, they don't do fingerprinting, but they do uh, their baseball field. They have oh, three baseball fields, I guess, that they uh, rent out. Very cool. So Watoma does do reservations for there to them. Mm -hmm. um, Lene is typing because for those of you who don't know, I called her out just now. Um, <laughs> she, is, she is the Rib Mountain. Yep. So I knew I knew this actually. She said would love to, but just changed changed a few years ago, and she did. She had um, that. I think it was about six months after they changed. That's when Lene and I came into contact, um, and the fact that they already had a brand new website. We're not going to push it. I'm not pushing it at all. Um, <laughs> we um, yeah because they are, they're gradually adding on more things. I think that's the key, um, is that we add on more things, we give more options, and Sheboygan is the same way. Whether you're a community with 500 people, 5,000 people, or you're like Sheboygan with close to 50,000 people, your community needs the options available to them. Um, they started and they were piece by piece. They started with a little a, a little thing that they asked us to create for them. And it's grown and grown and grown. So um, it, whether it's, again, a project that's $3,000 or it's $10,000, it's all in what works for your community. Sheboygan has done it piece by piece. They do not have a website with us. That's totally okay, though we'd prefer it. Um, but really for us, the big thing is to get those websites digitized so that they are clear, reliable, and transparent to your community members. Um, again, another use case, Big Cedar Lake. Um, so they, they're using it for boat launches, which is actually a perfect example because that's all they use. Um, that's all they use is for boat launches. And again, it's totally okay. I would hope that we have with the growth packages where you can slowly add things on and change things that they will at some point grow bigger. I agree, Lene. Changing, um, changing websites is a huge headache. And we do. We have an amazing staff that is right there helping out, jumping in. Um, they make things a lot easier for sure. As we mentioned earlier, Kiwani, this is the QR code that I had referred to. Now, I don't, I honestly, I don't know because I never tried out daddy's phone, but I don't think a flip phone will identify. No. <laughs> I don't know. They That's still sell them. Them. They still sell them. But I feel but, like so um, few people use flip phones. Like even my 80 year old grandpa i think he's in his 80s even he has a smartphone at this point <laughs> well i asked daddy once i said daddy why you still got that flip phone he's like fits in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> and that is it was it it's it fit in his front pocket so if otherwise he put it in his back pocket and then he'd sit on it and if he put it the the smartphone into his front pocket it kept falling out and breaking so He's like, I just, he went back to his. Um, oh, yes. Thank you, Nella. I, I appreciate that. So they, Big Cedar Lake is not just launching passes, but they have daily, monthly, and seasonal um, reservations that you can make. So again, they are growing as time goes on. They went from a basic to a little more advanced, and they are one of those that is using a department at a time. And then Kiwani, as we talked about, um, they do have their QR codes, which we started doing specifically for them. QR codes are becoming very widely known um, across the country. A lot of people are starting to use them. I actually pay for things at my daughter's softball game with a QR code 
that I just scan, whether it's um, through PayPal or Venmo, and the QR codes there are very similar. Um, Castleton in, up in Vermont, um, they do have the, the facility rentals, and there you go, the, the fingerprint appointments for the police department. So that's what Megan was referring to earlier. Yes. <laughs> So um, I've done some research. Nellet also, I will admit, she she helps me with a lot of research too. But I did, I, I spent more than one morning um, going through the, the Hague of files to see who uses what and where. And really what it comes down to is that you have got to do the research. You need to know what you truly need. You need to know who can provide it for you. And then once you once you really look into what's being used a lot, that form that's coming back time and time again, um, that people are you know walking into the office to deliver to you. Once you know that, you start having an idea of where you need to start, so you can lay out that plan. Um, I would say the major major thing is once you have that plan laid out, don't let it go, don't let it slide, don't set it on your desk for tomorrow. Go ahead, write it on your whiteboard, and um, give yourself a target. I'm going to do this. I'm going to complete this by this date, this by this date, and this by this date. When I get to the end, I will have the bullseye. I will have my team completely digitized so that when I, Bella, would like to take off from maternity leave, Miss Betty can do things on her own. I, I'm I'm absolutely certain they are so incredibly grateful to have two people on their team with, okay, pearls and hair in common, but they can come to an endpoint. And no matter how big or small your team is, you can as well. If you start to digitize that website, start getting things moving, you can truly get to the point where it's okay for you to have days off. It's okay for you to have a week off because everything's going to be there on your system. So when you come back in, or not necessarily even when you come back in, I know that we have many, many towns where the mayor is an active part of their website. The mayor can go in and say, yes, reservation approved. There's no reason they can't. They are no different than you or I. They can approve a reservation just as easily as Betty and Bella can. Um, so the sooner that you get things online, the sooner that you have extra sets of hands that are there to help you out. So, oh, look at, there's my Sully boy. That's um, such a cute picture. <laughs> I know, and I, I had to laugh when, now that I added it all on here, I had to laugh because they say that the more time you spend with the pet, the more you look alike. And look at us today. We look just alike. Also, they need to I just did your video on Facebook. I saw it earlier, actually. <laughs> that reminded me. That, that reminded me of it. <laughs> but we are. We're like twinsies now. So yes, thank you. It has been awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Because I have answers, or Megan does. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and I, I promise you, there is no foolish questions. Um, the only foolish questions is the one that you don't ask. I think it's been a fun day. I'd hope for more reactions, but it's okay. I'll forgive y'all. I didn't know how to react either. <laughs> so you can feel free to put questions in the question and answer box or in the chat. Thank you so much, Lene. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Give us a call or an email if there's something we can help you with. You disappeared Ellen, for a second. I, me. Yes, because I was actually, because me, the tech savvy person that I am, I was trying to type something and somehow oh. I muted myself and canceled my camera at the same time. <laughs> oh. 
Um, now you might have may I don't know. Do you have handy my number in my um in my email that they can message me directly? Um, they there you go. Okay, so y'all see Megan. That's exactly what she's doing. She's getting ready to copy and paste. That's oh, what now it's like where I did. <laughs> I was hey, working on it. <laughs> so that's exactly what I was trying to do. And I shut off my camera and microphone. <laughs> I, I still find it ironic that I was chosen to do this webinar because obviously I am one of the least tech savvy, but it just shows to grow. We sh just goes to show we can all grow. Thank you, Nellet. So yes, anyone, please feel free to privately email me or call me um, if you have questions that you just do not want to publicly ask on our support um, line, and it's totally okay. Uh, mo most of you know Megan as well, and you can also reach out to her. If yeah, I'll my email. If you have any of the yes. questions about like the digital tools, feel free to reach out. Or if you want to yeah. get on the live demo with me, I always like doing those. Yes. And we're happy to, um, we can do um, any of the digital tools with a growth package, or we can do them separately with, hey, God, whatever works best for y'all. Yeah. And I, I absolutely, um, we we talked about all the different opportunities out there um, for technology specifically because we don't want you to feel like you have to be committed to the tools that we have. There's different tools out there and it's all about what works best for your municipality. Yep. This was a long one. <laughs> I know I apologize. Like, I just get going and look out. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't have any demos until later on, so we're okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad. I feel like I kind of took everyone's day, but. It was okay. some good information. In my defense, though, my team members got a little out of control today, and I did have to stop for them rolling their bags. <laughs> you know it. Hey. It happens. It's all good. That's why your your team members there is supporting you. Yeah. Is it supposed to be at half an hour today? Because I think it's forty five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, y'all. No I'm gonna worries. stop the recording. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.